Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 7.1. We're going to talk about dilations. So uh, how does a dilation affect the side lengths and angle measures of a figure? And our goal today is to dilate figures and identify characteristics of dilations. So we're going to describe uh, what a dilation is, give a definition, as well as the center of dilation. So let's informally define a dilation. Uh, so remember that uh, rigid motions are transformations that preserve the side lengths and angle measures uh, of a given pre-image. So um, when you go from a pre-image to an image, the sides are the same measures before and after the transformation, as well as the angle measures. For example, translations, rotations, and reflections, uh, these are examples of rigid motions. Rigid motions are also known as congruence transformations. Now a dilation is a transformation in which a pre-image is enlarged or reduced by a given factor which we refer to as the scale factor. So uh, here's the pre-image uh, on the left and uh, as we perform a dilation, in this case an enlargement, uh, it becomes the image. And notice that the angles remain the same. So if you start out as a right triangle, you're going to remain a right triangle and all the angles will remain the same as well. However, the size is, um, is different in both. So a dilation is not a rigid motion because it does not satisfy the side length criteria. Now, um, a dilation is a uh, formal transformation that has a center of dilation C and a scale factor, which is sort of like the magnification factor, uh, in which uh, n, is, n cannot be negative. So n would have to be a decimal or a number greater than 1, for example. Uh, and it has the following properties. So um, we'll get to those properties. But uh, let's look at a, a line segment, uh, line segment AB. And let's say we want to perform a dilation and with a scale factor of 2. Scale factor of 2, if n is greater than 1, that indicates that you're enlarging the uh, pre-image. So you're enlarging the figure. Uh, you're doubling the size and you're, we want to dilate about a point labeled C. And, uh, and so if we want to enlarge this, well, then it's gonna be twice as long. And so that would be, for example, a prime B prime, so, um, which is roughly twice as large. And uh, we'll go ahead and show this. Uh, the point C in this, in this um, figure is right here. And you notice that when I take point C and I and if I want to enlarge AB, I draw a line from the point, the uh, center of dilation C, all the way up to the uh, pre-image. And then if I want to double the length, I would have to double the length of each of these line segments uh, from the center to the pre-image. And if I double this, if I double this measure, then I would get, then I would have to extend it beyond the pre-image, and that will give me the image here. And I would have to also extend this part. And that's how you can think of a dilation. If you want to dilate about a specific center, you draw a line from the center to the uh, ends of the pre-image or each part of the pre-image, and then you extend it beyond if you want to enlarge it, or you would uh, cut it in a specific ratio if you want to reduce the image, the length of the image. All right, so that point C is referred to as the center of dilation. Now, uh, point R maps to R prime in such a way that R prime is on, uh, in this case, CR, and CR prime is N times CR. So uh, basically, it's saying that if you have a, uh, a given point, you know, R, which in, this, in, this, in the case of this uh, diagram, uh, you know, you could say it's A. So the uh, point A maps to A prime in this case in this characteristic they use R, in such a way that A prime is on this line segment, which, is, which we refer to as CA, according to this diagram. And uh, that CA, or the length of CA prime, so the length of this line segment, is basically twice the length of um, the, from the center to the pre-image. Okay, so you can think of it in terms of this picture, but this is just a generic description of the property. And each length in the image is n times, so for example, two times, the corresponding length of the pre-image. And then the image of the center is the center um, itself. So that means that if I have a, um, that the center does, does not move, the center stays uh, stationary. 
So for example, if I had a um, triangle or some kind of shape, maybe a rectangle, uh, with in which one of the points, one of the vertices of the rectangle is the center itself, then the rectangle, the other dimensions of the rectangle will change, the other vertices will change, but the center will stay the same. And uh, if n is greater than 1, then we have an enlargement, as we can see in the uh, image on the right. And if it's smaller than 1, it's a reduction. If it's smaller than 1, but greater than 0. Uh, every angle uh, is preserved. So uh, the angles in the original and the pre-image are the same as the, are congruent to the angles in the image. If the center of dilation is the origin, then the symbol that we use, instead of using uh, this symbol, uh, we just simply state the, mag the scale factor, the magnification factor. All right, so let's uh, look at an example in which we dilate a figure. In this case, the center of uh, rotation is P. So, and we want to do a scale factor of one half. So we want to reduce the uh, size of the image by a half. So we're gonna draw a ray from P to uh, each of the corners of the pre-image, like so. All right, you always do it from the center of dilation. And then in this case, we, we don't wanna extend beyond the vertices. We want to actually go be before the vertices because we wanna cut it by a half. So we're gonna cut this um, PB in half, and that roughly corresponds to um, PB prime. We're gonna we're you know we're going to um, do this for all of these line segments here, and they're all roughly a half of the distances from the center to the uh, vertex of the image. All right, and then we can draw the final image, um, which is we can see that it's half as large as the pre-image. All right, let's look at another example. We wanna do a dilation um, where we have three, the, a three as a scale factor about the point Q. All right, so uh, Q is the center of dilation. So we're gonna go straight from Q to each of the vertices of the figure like this. So we're gonna draw rays to the, to the vertices. It's okay if you extend beyond them, but the only ones that we're interested in is the distance here to here, here and here. And then we want to extend that by three times. So we want to do three, uh, triple the size of each of those lines that I um, highlighted. And if I do that, well, this is gonna be double right here, and then this is gonna be triple. And so we can go ahead and uh, call that W prime. We can see that this is triple the size, three times the size of the original. And then we'll do that for the other ones. That's gonna indicate two times, three times bigger. For the other one, two times, three times bigger and then so on, three times bigger on each side. And so now we can connect those points and uh, we have our dilated figure and looks like the angles are the same for the original and after, um, but the sizes are different. All right, so got another example. We want to um, do a dilation on a rectangle and with center P and center P is outside of the rectangle. So we want to find the scale factor of the dilation. So um, this uh, one is the pre-image and then the one on the right is the image. So if I want to find the scale factor, all I have to do is take the image and divide it by the pre-image. So scale factor is um, after or final divided by initial. And so we want to do this for each of the sides. And so if I take, for example, uh, this side, which is nine units, and, I, and I, that roughly, that corresponds to AB, and this side, which is six units, corresponds to this side right here. So if I divide, which is uh, only two units. So if, if I divide each of these um, sides by each other, then you'll notice I get the same scale factor, which is three. If the scale factor is the same, that means that we have a dilation. And that means that, and that's gonna be important later on. So how are the side lengths and angles related? Well, because it's a dilation, the angles, notice, remain the same. It's still a rectangle. It doesn't change into a different figure, for example, a trapezoid. It remains a rectangle. The angles are 90 degrees, but the size is different. So because the scale factor is the same, the figures are what we call proportional. The sides change by a ratio of three to one, but the angles remain the same. All right, so I've got another example. Now we, we wanna find the vertices of the image A prime, B prime, C prime 
under the transformation d3. So we're gonna so dilation with a scale factor of three. All right. So for a dilation with the center at the origin, the um, these are rather simple to do. All you have to do for a dilation with the center at the origin is to multiply the coordinates by the scale factor. So and this is the um, rule. I guess you can say this is the rule for dilations with uh, with the center at the origin. Pretty straightforward. So if we want to do d3, for instance, then we multiply the x and y coordinate by 3. So if we want to do point A, which is right here, which we can see it's 2, negative 1, we simply multiply, if we want to do a d3 transformation, we want to multiply each of the coordinates by 3. And that leaves us with 6, negative 3. Repeat that for b and c, and you get your coordinates for the vertices. And then so we'll go ahead and plot these coordinates. So um, we have here 6, and then down here is negative 3. We have negative 3, uh, 6. So it's beyond the um, scope of the graph that we have here. And then we have finally ne um, a 9 and 0. And so you can see that this extends way beyond the image. It's because it's triple the size. So it's going to be pretty. Uh, large and then we have uh, 9 0 so it extends way beyond uh, due to the large size of the of the dilation all right so um, for the next example we want to do uh, kind of like what we did before the vertices of the image uh, this time we want to do it for a half transformation so a half scale factor and this time we also want to do it about not the origin, but we want to do it about a specific point in, in the figure itself. So we're looking at the vertex, one of the vertex, uh, vertices of the triangle, so and namely vertex R. So remember that when you're doing a dilation about a center uh, that is part of the image, that part of the image, the center R in this case, will remain the same. It will not change. And we'll show you this. So we're going to do a chart. Uh, in order to demonstrate this dilation. So we have here the coordinates of R, which are negative 4, 0. We have the coordinates of P, 8, 4, and then the coordinates of Q, 12, negative 4. They're lifted, listed there. And we want to what we want to do is the distance from R, uh, in this case, you're always taking the distance from the center to each of the vertices in the pre-image. So we want to find the distance between R, which is the center, and R in the triangle. But notice that the distances um, are going to be zero because the R, which is the vertex of the triangle, is right on the center. So that one's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be um, zero. But remember, you just subtract the coordinates. So you subtract the x coordinates, negative 4 minus negative 4, and you get zero. And then you're going to subtract 0 minus 0, and that'll give you zero. So the distance from R to R not surprisingly, is zero in the horizontal and vertical directions. Now we want to dilate um, the distance from uh, R. So we want to multiply by the scale factor of one half. And so we're going to multiply either horizontal or vertical distance by half, but we know that zero times anything is zero. So we're not going to really do anything to this shape. Then we're going to add those distances to the center, but we know that it's zero, so it doesn't really do anything. So we know that the image stays stationary uh, under the transformation. And that makes sense because it's the center of dilation and should, that should not move. Now let's look at ones that are not so trivial. R is a pretty trivial point. Um, so let's look at next P. So we want to do the horizontal distance. So we want to do the distance from the center to P, this horizontal distance here, which you can see from the image, from the um, picture here that it's eight, uh, or the distance from negative four to eight rather, which is a distance of 12. And you can get that by subtracting the X coordinates here, so eight minus negative four. Remember when you do this, it's final minus initial. So you always wanna take the final coordinate minus the initial coordinate. And then we're going to repeat that to get the y distance, which is the distance from 4 to 0, 4 minus 0. And so now we got the vertical and horizontal distance here. And so now we can multiply those by the dilation factor. So we're going to dilate these, multiply each of these by a half. And you'll get 
6 and 4, or 6 and uh, 2 rather, this should be a 2, not a 4. And so we add each of these coordinates, so this should be here a 2, not a 4. And so uh, you're going to add each of those coordinates to the center, so uh, which is R, because you want to move it by the dilation, and that will give you your new dilation or your new coordinate. And so negative 4 plus 6 is going to be 2, and then we have 0 plus 2, which is 2. So the coordinate should be 2, 2. All right, so basically it boils down to finding the horizontal vertical distance, scaling it by the factor that for the dilation, and then adding the coordinates to the center. All right, let's repeat that for Q. So we want to subtract the coordinates from Q to R, or from R to Q, so Q minus R, and that will give us this um, horizontal distance from the R to Q, which is 16, and then repeat that for the Y values, negative four minus zero, and notice that that distance is negative, and that just, that's just saying that it's going down. So this, this means right here, it's the, it, you're going down to get to that coordinate. It's not saying that we're not saying that the distance itself is negative. We're just saying that the negative indicates it's going down. And uh, for the dilations, we multiply by a half. So we get eight and negative two. All right. So uh, next we're going to add the coordinates. So we're going to add the eights to the center and we're going to add the negative two to the center. But remember, adding a negative number is the same thing as subtracting. And so our final coordinates are 4, negative 2. So you can see that having a negative sign makes a difference because it does change the answer uh, to the coordinates. So I would suggest doing the final minus initial rule that I, uh, as I stated earlier. And if you get a negative answer, then that just means you subtract the numbers from the center. And if you get a positive answer, that just means you add the numbers to the center. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found this informative. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.